On this video, I'm going to run through the steps of programming the Baofeng uh, UV82 radio walkie-talkie as a, a receiving scanner. I'm going to go through it step by step. Whether every step is correct or not, we'll find out and uh, we'll go from there. To begin, before I really program this radio to get some clarity, I'm going to re reset this radio back to the original Chinese settings and the configuration that it had when it came off the Chinese factory. And uh, for two reasons, it came with a bunch of frequencies in it, and I've also been messing around with it for days, so who knows where it could be. So here we go. I'm going to reset it by going to menu. menu. I know the menu is on, well, I've actually I've got it there already. But the menu is on function number 41. Yeah. Actualization. And then I'm going to hit it again. It asks me for the source. I don't know what that means, but I do Cancel. know. Oh, come on. Okay. Initialization. All. Source. And do it. And now it's telling me to wait. Okay, it resets. And it's in Chinese all of a sudden. So the first thing I'm going to do take it out of Chinese, which I think is right over here. I'll get rid of that tone in a while. Okay, we'll go. Here we go. Off, no. English, yes. Confirm. Voice prompt. Confirm. I like to confirm it twice. So the radio is now set to factory spec, except it talks in English rather than Chinese. And we're ready to go. The next step I'm going to do is take my genuine Bofunk programming cable which has some USB devices inside the end here. And I'm going to plug it in my, to my laptop. Laptop said hello. And I'm going to plug it into my radio. And the reason I did that, because I'm now going to upload the data in this radio, the configuration data, into the computer so the computer knows what this radio is and it'll also give me a baseline to start with in terms of configuration on the program so I can start programming this thing. Here's the opening screen of the Chirp software that I'm going to use to program this Bofeng UV82. And I'll start out by downloading the Chinese configuration from the radio into the computer so the computer will know what kind of radio is on there and it will bring up the basic load for me to work with. So I click radio and download from radio and OK on the radio thing again. And so we have the configuration information coming out of the radio into the computer and we should soon see that on the screen. Okay, there we go. This is what the Chinese put in, 136 meg frequency and four unused channels, channel 0 to 4. Now they trick you here because what they've also done way down in the bottom on memory 127, they put a 470 meg frequency down there for some reason or other. And if you don't find that, after you finish programming all these and you start running your radio, you'll keep seeing this random 470 frequency going through your scan screen and you'll wonder what now why is that happening so let's go find that I'll put 127 this is the memory range it'll show up here on this screen the memory's memory range it'll go from 0 to 127 now so I'll go and there's all your other memories and then I'll go down to the bottom and there it is the 470 625 frequency they put in and so I'm going to get rid of that now by clicking on it like that. I clicked on 127, just one click, and hit delete, and it zeroes it out. Now I'm going to go back up to the top, right there. There's my one frequency. And I'm going to reduce this range from 0, 127 to, to 0, to 3, I think, is what I need.
Okay, I'm going to start with the actual programming of this radio. You'll notice when this uh, load comes up on the screen, you've got all this stuff on here, and I'm only programming this radio as a scanning receiver, so some of this doesn't apply to me, like the CTCSS uh, transmit tone, uh, the digital tone squelches, which I'm not using, this digital tone squelch polling, I think that is, and the cross mode, I'm not using any of those. And amazingly enough, if you go to view and hit hide unused fields, it clears all that stuff out of there and makes it a lot clearer, at least for my application. Okay, whoops. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to start off with the frequency in location zero. I'll click that twice and get that little screen. The frequency is 154.4. The, comp the computer will fill in the rest. I'm going to call it fire because it's the fire department. Tone mode. I'm going to select tone squelch, which, which means the receiver will be looking for a CTCSS tone to come in, a certain tone, before it will pass audio out of the speaker. And so I'm going to select that. This tone is for transmit. I don't, I'm not using transmit, so I'm going to ignore that. Tone squelch. I'm going to set that for 123, which is the fire department's frequency in my area. These four inputs I'm going to ignore. Duplex, this one for me is very important because if I go down to here and put off like that, it disables the transmitter so I cannot transmit on the fire department frequency, which I really don't want to do. Okay, uh, this one is not being ignored. I don't have an offset because I don't have a transmit. Uh, mode, the fire department has gone to the narrow band scheme, so I will change that to narrow band with 12 and a half uh, kilohertz uh, of modulation and power I'm not putting any power but I put it to, I'm gonna put it to low just because I'm gonna put it to low so that's what the initial programming on a channel would look like the other four are just a repetition of that with the, with the uh, associated frequency and tone squelch and then of course this one could also have if you're programming a radio you could program this this uh, channel a second uh, channel one uh, to transmit, so you have that flexibility. Okay, now I'm through programming the frequencies and the PLs for my four receive channels for my uh, Bofeng Quasi Scanner. And here's what it looks like. There's the original frequency I put in, called it fire. I requested tone squelch. So the squelch frequency, the CTCSS frequency is 123.0. On duplex, I've got that off because it turns off the, the transmitter, disables the transmitter, so I don't just transmit on top of a fire uh, uh, frequency. I've got it set for narrow band FM, and I set it for low power just for the heck of it. And so the others are just different frequencies. We same requirement tone squelch, various. CTCSS tone squelch frequencies, they're all turned off, all narrow band, all low, and my memory range is 0 to 3, which is a total of 4, so that's what you see there. There's another 127 channels uh, that are blank down there, but I'm not using them, so I don't want to display them. If I open up the view where you can see everything, you would see that, but well, this stuff is superfluous. By the way, this the software actually populated that. I didn't do that. And the software, once I started, populated these items. And I didn't have to, to populate that at all. It, it, it figured out from the first one I did, and it, probably from the frequency range, uh, what I was doing and just kept on populating that stuff. So I'm going to go back to hide the unused fields. And that's it for programming the memories. Moving on to program the settings in the radio, I'll go over here and I'll click settings and I'll get that screen. And we'll just start from the top and move down. Carrier squelch level, that's the same thing as if you had a squelch knob. Uh, there are some folks that don't believe this thing actually works, but it does. If you set this to zero and put it in the radio, this, the radio will come live with squelch noise as if you turn the squelch knob all the way open. 
and it has various levels as you turn it back. Five is a default. I'm going to leave it there. Battery saver. I don't have a battery. I have a uh, battery eliminator, so I'm going to just get rid of that. I, I actually wouldn't change that if I had a battery. I would just leave it there. Backlight timeout. I like the light. If for no more reason than that, I'm going to put it to 24, so it'll stay open a lot. The beep. Um, I'm going to get rid of the beep. <laughs> timeout timer. That's if you sit on your microphone. After 60 seconds, the radio will turn its, the transmitter off and save itself from heat destruction. We're not transmitting, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Display mode. Uh, I've got that set. The A, the A mode is the top display on the radio. i got it set to name. The B mode is the bottom display in the radio. I've got it set to frequency. They're both the same memory channels. Uh, it's got to do with the dual, the dual watch thing, on which I'm not using. So I'm actually just using the A mode for a uh, static uh, name display and the bottom one for the frequency. The bottom one will be moving when it scans. You've got three color choices, purple, blue, and orange. You can put either, any one of those into either one of those uh, states. The standby state, the receive state, the transmit state. It's just a, a personal choice, I guess. Roger beep, no Roger beep. No transmit, no Roger beep. And so enough of that. The next thing I'm going to do is program uh, another one of the settings. This will be the advanced settings. I'm going to click on advanced settings. And there we go. We get these question screens. So we'll start from the top. Vox sensitivity, that's a transmit function. I don't have any Vox, so I'm just going to leave that off. Dual watch, I'm not interested in that. I'm going to turn that off. And the priority goes along with that, so nothing to be done there. The alarm mode, this is a, a mode that if something happens in your radio, I don't know what, it will send a tone back to the base station, which presumably will decode it and alarm someone somewhere. Uh, I'm going to put it on site because... Uh, that's the one that aims it back towards the transmitter, and I'm not using a transmitter, so I think that'll just kill it. Uh, so that's an, actually a non-function. Voice, I've already converted that to English manually. did it in, uh, earlier in the video. This is a very interesting one. This has this is scan resume. It has three modes. Time operation, carrier operation, and seek or seeking. The time operation, I tried it. It does what it says. It talks about a, a preset delay from the time that the uh, carrier on the channel you're listening to drops to the time it starts scanning. Apparently it's preset. I couldn't find a variation on it. And it's very fast, so it, it, re it starts scanning within a half or a second or so after the carrier drops. And the result is if you've got a fast-going conversation, you're liable to miss words or syllables, and it's confusing. So I didn't like that one. The seeking, that is a thing you set up where if you want to know a freq what frequency and what PL, CTCSS tone, came up on your radio, if you're searching for one, it will stop on whatever it hears, uh, and lets you see what frequency and what, P what CTCSS tone has come in, and you can write it down and presumably use it later. The one I've chosen is CO, Carrier Operation. It uh, recognizes a carrier when it comes in, stops the scan. Then when the carrier goes away, uh, about this, it holds the scan from going for about five seconds, and then it restarts, which is enough time for a conversation to continue without losing the channel and having to rescan. This radio does not really have a setup for uh, being selective to the point where it wants to see the correct frequency plus the correct CTCSS tone come in to stop the scan. So what will happen if you get a carrier on your frequency, the scan will stop, you'll get no audio. If you get a carrier plus an incorrect a correct carrier and an incorrect CTCSS, the scan will stop, but you'll get no audio. 
if you get a correct frequency plus a correct CTCSS tone, the scan will stop and you'll get audio. So that says that in some conditions this thing will be stopped from scanning by an incorrect signal and I couldn't figure out any way to, to, uh, uh, to go get around that. I think it's built into the firmware. So it is what it is, but it d does work well on a fire channel which presumably just has one uh, operational repeater on it. Okay, enough of that. Moving on, busy channel lockout, that has to do with transmitting on a busy channel. It would stop you from doing that. I'm not transmitting, not, not working with it. Automatic key lock, I'm not going to enable that one. Broadcast radio, I don't need that. I'm just going to take that out. Uh, the squelch tail, these are actually transmit functions. And what they do is when you, uh, if you're keyed up into a repeater and you, you drop off the key, you release the radio, it will allow the radio to drop off the CTCSS tone before it drops the carrier and that will make the uh, receiving end's radio go quiet before it drops it, the uh, carrier there and they will not get a squelch uh, noise on the end. It's a silent, a silent uh, squelch noise turnaround. I'm not transmitting so I'm just going to leave those as they are. No, nothing to happen in there. I'm going to leave that enabled. I'm going to leave that enabled. And that would be it for the advanced settings screen. Now to set the settings on the other settings. So for that I'll go to settings and I'll go to other settings and there it is. And this doesn't have a whole lot in it. In fact for me it's got nothing in it. But uh, it's got the uh, software version, the firmware version in it, uh, some power on messages, whatever that is, a welcome message, I don't care about that. I don't care. Let's see what the choices are here. I don't know what that means and I don't care. Here it seems to have the uh, uh, limits for the VFO from 130 megs to 175 megs uh, and I'm certainly within that range. I'm all about 154, 156 megs so I'm not going to mess with that. I guess you could uh, alter that. I don't know what the actual range of the radio is, how wide it'll go, but it, there's apparently some flexibility there. The uh, transmit is not enabled, and I'm going to keep it that way. It is, it is disabled. UHF, the same thing, 400 megs to 4, 520, and, it's, and the transmitter is disabled. And we'll, I will leave it at that. And now for the work settings. So I'm going to go over to settings, work mode settings, and there they are. This one's rather interesting. Display A and display B. I'm going to leave that just as it is. Actually, I'm going to put that on display B, which is the one I'm working with. I'm going to leave it on frequency. I don't know what that means. Keypad lock. I'm going to leave that disabled. I'm going to put uh, memory channel, A channel on zero because I think that's where it sits at. This is probably dual watch stuff. I don't know what the heck this stuff is. I'm going to put them both on zero. I don't think this is going to bother my scanning receiver at all. I may have to learn what that is. Okay. Uh, this is VFO stuff. Uh, when you go to frequ the frequency mode on the radio, it's going to show these two frequencies, UHF and VHF, uh, as a quiescent frequency in there, and you could change that there. I think you could, and you could change it on the radio, obviously. The VFO shift, I'm not going to be transmitting, so I don't want to shift, so off is good. Offsets, I don't care because I'm not going to transmit. I'm going to set these two to low power just because I'm slightly paranoid although I won't be transmitting. And I'll set these to narrow band just because, just because. And the ID, I'm not using any IDs that can sit there. The tuning step 2.5, which apparently is the default, is fine. That'll work with, with what I'm doing. And that should complete programming the, all the four settings and the memories on the radio.
Now I'm going to upload the uh, configuration data from the computer into the radio. And I'm going to video now because I want to show you the, there's some lights here that will shine. Uh, there's a couple of lights that will show the data passing through. And there's a green light up here that usually comes on when it's receiving data, but not always. It, sometimes it doesn't come on and it still receives the data. I don't understand that. So here we go. Um, uplo let's see, upload to radio. And away it goes. Let's see, green light came on. Hopefully you can see the green light flashing under here. I think you can. And it is cleaning itself up. And then you'll notice as soon as it gets through cloning the information into the radio, the radio resets. And it's ready to go. Okay, here's the radio as I turned it on. It came up into its frequency mode. And so first of all, I'm going to change that. And the way you do that is by holding the menu button. Menu. Whoops, not that one. By turning it off, holding the menu button, turn it back. Channel mode. Came back up in the channel mode. If I did it again, it would come in. Frequency mode. Frequency mode. But I'm going to do it one more time and put it back in the channel mode. Channel mode. Okay. And now I'm going to start it scanning by holding down the um, uh, the scanning button for a couple of seconds. Scanning beacon. And it sounds like she says scanning beacon, but I think she's really saying scanning begin. But who am I to know what that is? One of the things I really want to make sure of with this radio, being that I've got it's a two-way radio and I've got fire frequencies loaded into it, is did I truly disable the transmit? So let's stop this thing from scanning by hitting the scan button. And I'll key it up. And there it is keyed up. N nothing, whoops, nothing happens. That would change colors and I would get a, a uh, antenna symbol, a symbol over here on the left hand side. I'll try it on the next channel. Three. Okay. Key it up. Nothing. Next channel, key it up, nothing. One. Key it up, nothing. Zero. And back to the original, nothing. This thing is a receiver only, so that worked out just fine. Five. First unit on scene will be the Santa IC on Orange Taxi. 